situated over there. There he goes, man. The man with no mustache. <laughs> I told you I cut my mustache off and look younger, man. If I have a mustache, I look old, man. Got to look younger as long as possible. Hey, man, these, are, these, <laughs> these young ladies, man, they like they like the beard, the silver beard, and the mustache, man. They like that stuff. Uh, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not ready for that yet. I'm gonna wait a little bit. Man, so, <laughs> Michael, this is my man, Cedric Taylor. Cedric Taylor, this is Michael Davis, my partner here with the podcast, man. Hey, How you doing? Nice Pretty good. How you doing? I'm all right. Yeah. I'm trying to. It's storming down here, so. Hopefully it doesn't interfere with uh the call or anything, but uh it should be all right. It's passing through. We got like a big thunderstorm here, but it should be okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah. It was it's a it was a uh, tropical storm and it, it was coming through. But it, it, yeah, no, it didn't it didn't it didn't affect it. It went through Jordan. I'm wrong. Okay. Oh, man. I'm trying to tell you about the Florida weather, man. My bad. <laughs> so Jason, Jason called uh, Mr. Mr. David. Jason called the last minute, so he talked yeah. about hours. Yeah, hey man, hey look man, you got to tell us about business, man. Dang man, so I appreciate you making it happen. It's all, good. it's all good. I was home chilling. It's all good. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Hey, who, you okay. root, who you rooting for, man? Uh, uh, who you put your team in this in the finals? Well, I'm very disappointed because I'm a, a long time Lakers fan forever. Yeah, 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 yeah. You you've been disappointed for a while, buddy. Yeah. No, we won last. Like, <laughs> I'm saying though, they they went out in the first round. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, injuries, man. You just. To me, like I, like I was saying, it to turn around town was enough time for those guys to recover. Mm-hmm. And a lot of those guys get injured, you know, and just, just they didn't get enough time to recover and train like, like properly. So that's what happens. Yeah. You know, I got hurt. They fired their trainer. The head trainer of the Lakers, they fired, it, fired her yesterday and the entire training staff, all of them. Where? Yeah. You about to go apply for the job? <laughs> no. <laughs> Wait. I got you. I got oh, you. Man. I got you. Hey man, so we're gonna we're gonna get this intro done right quick, sweet, and then uh, we're gonna we're gonna start asking you questions. Yeah, I'm gonna you... go ahead and bring us in. Yeah, <laughs> All right. right. Welcome to another episode of I Am The Change Podcast, brought to you by Dreams to Reality Incorporated, a nonprofit organization geared toward uplifting, inspiring, and empowering communities all over the world. I'm your host, Michael Davis, alongside Mr. Jason Redman. Hey, man, what's going on with you, man? How you doing today? Not too much, man. I'm doing good. Enjoying this good old Father's Day. How you doing? Hey, man. Hey, happy Father's Day to you, man. Happy, happy Father's, Father's Day. Day to you, too. Hey, look, man, I, I had to reach in the bag, man, and go get one of my partners, man. I had to go get... Uh, my main man uh, from Miami, Florida, uh, okay, my man Cedric okay. Taylor, man. Hey, look, this young man right here, man. This uh, we came in. So I came in. I was when I got to Knoxville College. I was a sophomore. He was. He came in as a freshman, and uh, man, it was always you know you always meet somebody that's a little different. You know, you know, has a little has a little swagger, different swagger about him. Uh, you know, being from Miami, everybody from Miami thought they was the, the best athletes, the best looking, the best. <laughs> you, know, always, you, know, you can't never tell nobody from Miami that they ain't. Nah. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, so uh, when he came in, man, he, he was a different dude, man. He wasn't like he wasn't like everybody else from Miami, man. He was always like he was always he was always to himself. He was very respectful, man. He was cool. He he was always about trying to learn, and uh, you know, man. I so my my sophomore year when I came back in the spring, I, I pledged Omega South Five Fraternity Incorporated, and then the next the next year, he came up to me and was talking to me about he wanted he wanted to do the same. I'm like, all right, man, you know, go ahead on, man. You, everybody say that. So he ended up getting down the next semester. He crossed the 93 the year after. And uh, man, I, I don't want to say he was my understudy, man, because I was the one from 92. He was the one from 93. We, were just, we just clicked, man. We've just been good friends. And uh, we always, it's always been a, a rivalry. Whenever we go to step shows, who's in the one spot? Like, you'll, if you ever see a video, a step show tape of us, you'll see us. Like, most people being in the line, we'll be sitting, we'll be standing side by side next to each other. So <laughs> that's true. So. Yes, That's what's yes. Up. but this is my but my but one reason I wanted to bring him on, man, because uh, like we play football together. So one thing you had to do in football season is work out. So we our, our off season workout program, you know, we guys would go in there work out on their own, get their own workout plans together. But you know, some guys wouldn't go in there. Like uh, Cedric wouldn't go in there and work out. So he he he'll say that he did, but I don't remember ever seeing him in the work in the <laughs> So, but, <laughs> I need to clarify. He put you out there, man. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah I, I'm gonna let you go ahead and tell the story, man. Go ahead, go ahead. Well, you know that our freshman year and our, our freshman year, and basically most of our sophomore, we didn't have a weight room per se. So our, our junior year, Jason's probably last year. They finally gave us a weight room, 
and I was in charge. My work study was in charge of the weight room, so I was in the weight room every day working out. Okay. I had to clean up, and so I got my five hundred dollars per month. So uh-huh. he may not know that, but that's what I did to pay my rent in my apartment. So yeah, yeah. I don't know what he's talking about. <laughs> yeah. So when I was there, I got freshman sophomore year. I didn't see many, but yeah, okay, yeah. But so so now, man, how did you get into when we graduate? So I got you came out in ninety six, right? Right. All right. So when you came out in ninety six, man, you graduated. You went back to Miami. Uh, and and you started cross training. Well, I started I started working out at the gym at first because it was just something I like to do, and mm-hmm. I was going going through the motion. I wasn't really sure what to do at first, and I made some strides there. But then a friend of mine, he was like, "Hey, says a thing called CrossFit. I think you'd be good at it. Why don't you come and try it out? You're in good shape." So the CrossFit gym down in my place called like Kendall, mm-hmm. Kendall Miami. It's in Miami, place called Kendall. So okay. I was doing that the one day at the Grand Open. So the workout was like. Three rounds, ten burpees, ten power cleans, one thirty-five, like ten boxes or something. Me and my best friend, like, oh, this ain't nothing. We do work out. This is nothing. So right. we had to do three rounds in front of a crowd of people. And so I did. He did one round and passed out. I did two <laughs> rounds and passed out. Oh, and man. I realized right then I was I was physically I was in good shape, but my cardio wasn't good. Okay. You know. So so ever since then I was hooked. I said, Well, I just go on Saturdays. And that'll be it. So I went on every Saturday I went all the way from North Miami, well, Aventura, all the uh-huh. way down to Kendall. Every Saturday morning, worked out for like three hours with those guys. But every workout, I was getting killed. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to go a couple of times a week and see how it is. And before you know it, I was hooked. So that's how I got started. It was all she wrote. Yeah, that was it. I got hooked. Yeah. So you competing? Uh, well, well, shortly after, like six months afterwards, we went to uh, – I went to a CrossFit competition called the Crush Games. And I, I, I was willing to watch. And once I watched that competition, it was like in 2012, I was like, oh, I'm doing one of these. I mean, I'm doing one of these regardless. It was nice. And so I, yeah. I was, so I signed, for, I signed for my first competition. I would pick the hardest one to, to do called the Beast Mode Battle, which is one hour of Ooh. like 10 workouts, one hour. Oh. So... You know what I happened? Did. I went out there. I went out there overconfident and got crushed. So yeah. you know, yeah. yeah, I got crushed. Uh-huh. I admit it. I was injured though. I didn't know at the time. I had a ruptured Achilles tendon, but I still did the workouts. Mm. I didn't know. I thought I, was, I thought it was hurt my foot. So oh, wow. yeah. So uh, um, I rehabbed it in ninety days. I came back and I signed up for a competition called Water Palooza, which is like the biggest competition down here in the south, south, the south region of. All the states like Florida, Georgia, it's the biggest company ever. So I said, I'm gonna do that just for fun, see how I do whatever as an amateur. But I end up doing really good. I had a chance to win at one point. So I finished ninth place out of 100 mm. people as an amateur. So mm. that's not bad, though. Solid. That's solid. No, I'm not bad for a guy that's 30, I was like 37 at the time, 38. Yeah, at the time. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Not bad when this guy's like, te- like high school and fresh out of college or whatever. That's pretty good. So Absolutely. I was doing I was doing competitions from say 2013 all the way to about 2016 actually. Then I stopped. You so you don't you don't compete. So you went to Puerto Rico for a competition too, didn't you? Yes, I did. I went to Puerto Rico for a competition. Nice. How was that? Yeah, it was it was first of all, Puerto Rico is an amazing place. If you haven't visited, you should. Yeah, it was man. I loved it. It treats like it treats like across the games, like it calls you out like your name, one at a time, where you're from. Well, box you went to, it was mm-hmm. um amazing. And I, I go to the amazing box box called Caution CrossFit. It's in Miami Lakes. It uh-huh. wasn't high at the time. Now it's in Miami Lakes, which is um uh, which is owned by a man named Dom, Dominique Marucci and okay. his dad. They're an amazing family. I love them, and I continue to go there as long as I can. But then after I CrossFit ended, like in the CrossFit like 2016, I started doing on a dare. I started doing powerlifting. I've been doing that ever <sighs> since. Tell me now. Tell me about powerlifting. Okay, probably a little different mm-hmm. because to me, to me, I'm older now, and I want I'm worried about getting injuries. So I did I do powerlifting now, and I I signed for my first powerlifting meet at the Crush Games called Crush Games at a powerlifting enemy called Strongman. So I did that. I finished fourth place, which is pretty good for my first time. Yeah. But I guess guys that were bigger than me were actually way more, way more than me at, at the time. So I went like maybe two thirty at the time. Those guys were like 250, 275, 300. So I was able to finish fourth place against those guys. Mm. And then I wanted to be a little more serious. 
So I signed up officially, got my, got my card and everything, my USPL card. And I did a CrossFit, I'm mean, not CrossFit, I did a positive meet down at um, CrossFit Soul. And um, I won that one. Mm -hmm. And then I did it again the following year and won it again, but I didn't qualify for states because my numbers weren't high. Enough. So I'm still working on that. But that's for fun, you know, I'm not trying to, if I win, I win. If I don't, I don't. I just do it for fun to keep myself in shape. That's all. Man, that's so, amazing. It, it, yeah, that, that's really amazing. Like, so wait, the transition from CrossFit to the powerlifting, like, was it, was it, was it, was it difficult or? Um, no, not really. Cause you know, in high school, I was, I made a thousand pound club in high school. So I pretty much love lifting weights, love lifting heavyweights. So I was pretty good with that. Mm -hmm. So with powerlifting to me is less injuries because between each lift, each lift, you had to take your time. Take a deep breath, pull a pause, show good form, and that kind of thing. And it's, you, it's a less, less for me, it's less injuries. Like, you know, I'm 47 now, so I want to lift as long as I can without getting injured. CrossFit, I love it, but it's a lot of injuries. You know, I hurt my back, I pushed nerve in my back, mm -hmm. I ruptured my Achilles tendon, hurt my shoulder. You know, even though I recovered from the injuries pretty well, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to continue to go through that. But also yeah. to keep my, also keep my injuries down, I do yoga four times a week at the studio. Now, I know okay. a lot of African-Americans don't like doing yoga because it feels like yeah. it's kind of, it's not the black man's move, whatever. But I'm telling mm -hmm. you, as adults, and as you get older, the number one injury, the number one injury of older people are falls. So okay. if you, you don't fall, you sleep and break your hip or shoulder. You know, it's hard for us to recover as we get older. If you, you're a man, you should work on your flexibility as much as you can. And, us, and as a woman, too, but men, we tend to shy away from those type of things because we feel it makes us feel kind of feminine or whatever. Right, right. say yoga is very important. I'm actually pretty good at it now. So I recommend anybody as a regular guy, because we sit in chairs all day for the most part. You're on the phone, you're on the computer, you're on your laptop. We're not made to just sit still. We're made to walk around and move. So honestly, I think that yoga is something that people should incorporate as part of their um, training, training regimen. Not much I do. You should. I go to the you studio think, four times a week. So you yeah. think yoga is really like, so I did yoga one time, man. I, you're not, and I'll be honest with you. I, I was that guy. I, I'm like, nah, dog, this ain't me. <laughs> but well, I said it, the Jason, the first time I went, I crossed I knew it. Dominique, yeah. Dominique Mucci, he, he recommended, like said, you, you, you're a very strong guy, but you're stiff. You know, you want yeah. to cross, you got to get a little more fluid. Once you try yoga, I'm like, yoga? I ain't no yoga. That's for like girls. I'm not doing yoga. Yeah, he yeah, said, this yeah, tried yeah. out. See, the first time I did, I literally died. Word? I, I, I literally died. Yeah, I mean, I was sweating. My heart was all beating all fast. And I was so sore the next day. I never did that before. Putting those yeah. different poses and stuff. Yeah, and I went back for more. Out. Yes, so I went back for more. So right, I, mean, I went back for more. And I went back for more. And I got hooked. You know, now I'm hooked all the way. You know, so not to say there are not no beautiful ladies in there, too, but that isn't my inspiration. Okay. But See, initially, um, when I started doing yoga, it was, it was for a female. <laughs> but now like I actually do yo I do yoga, you know what I'm saying? Um every morning uh to stretch me out, loosen up. I mean it, it it's great like with cuz I work out a lot. With my workout routine, I mean, without yoga I'd be so much more sore. I mean, oh wow. A lot like it, it helps. It helps and having yeah. your body just loose like that, loosening your mind, uh, muscles, it helps your breathing, you know what I'm saying? It helps a lot of a lot actually. Absolutely. I'm about to try to get in. And I believe, I believe honestly, but check me for getting injury. Injuries kept my injury level low because I'm so I'm more flexible now than mm -hmm. I was before. And uh, before, you know, you, number one thing injuries I think CrossFit is like backs for the most part. People blind yeah. their back. That's no one injury. Yeah. And so since I do a lot of, I'm I'm so serious about yoga. I think that's lowered my my it lowered my injury injury level down a lot because I'm so flexible and I'm able to do more weight. You know, so. I recommend, I know black people don't like to do that. I'm going to be honest, I know black folks are kind of Pilates, yoga, it should be part of your, your daily um regimen, in my opinion. Okay. Really should, especially with back mm -hmm. issues. Like you talk about that back, it'll stretch that back out. I mean, it'll 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 make you feel so much better. I mean, it, Absolutely. it definitely should be a daily routine for, for everybody. Yeah, At least three times a week, you know what I'm saying? Exactly. Does it work on your core? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. also does yeah. your core as well, like Jason okay. said, your core. Your core is the most, your core in your back. If you core in your back was strong, the level of injuries go down. That's number two. Number, the two things you should focus on if you're doing any kind of physical fitness. Your core have a strong core and a strong back. 
So, you know, I, I work on my back probably like once a week, but I do yoga, I said, yoga four times a week. And now, okay. yeah, now I'm lifting a lot. Of, now I'm doing my lifts a lot of belt, which I just started doing thanks to um, one of the coaches at the gym, his name is Miguel. He recommended I start lifting a lot the belt. So I, um, I was kind of hesitant at first, but, but yeah. he said, I'm strong in my lifts. I have to take the belt off. To, so, so when you do the power lifting, you put the belt on? Well, I have, well only I've been um, lifting like this in January without the belt. So even when it, to, to the weight gets heavy, I okay. still don't put the belt on because I got to so, get my back strong. Yeah. So you're talking about when the weight gets heavy, though. Like, what, what do you call heavy? Like, to me, like, yeah. if you did lift in four or five, that's heavy. No, nah, I, I don't wear the belt for that. For four or five? <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. So what you did lift? Yeah. Right now, I'm probably definitely like 545. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I squat so, about the same amount. Yeah. So, and so I'm 47 four, years old, too. And you squatting that at 47? That's yeah. solid. That's, that it's is, on, man. It's on, it's on Instagram. It's on there. It's on, okay. you know, it's on there. Got, so, I don't try to show too much on there, but it's, it's on there somewhere on there. A couple of times. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I've been I've been squatting with 500 since, since probably like 2016. But prior to me going to Knoxville College with Jason, I was squatting 500 too. So, but, oh, no. okay. But, All right. yeah, I was, and I was power clean like 225 at 16. You know, I was pretty strong. Jason, you probably didn't know that's why I had to run, run Jason over the <laughs> <country. laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you was, man. You was. Yeah, you got me a couple of times. I ain't, I ain't gonna front. You did. You got me. But thanks yeah. for the honesty. <laughs> hey, man, I ain't gonna, hey, man, you got me. You got me. I ain't, I'm not that uh, kind of guy. I'll I tell you the truth. Yeah. I remember we was on a, hey, I, I do remember this. When we, when we first came, Man, if, if we had, every linebacker we had, man, had a dislocated shoulder, man. So we, we kept, we got, uh, Cedric would come in there and he, we uh, blocking. And man, at every practice, somebody be sitting there with the ice pack on their shoulder. That's like, true. Like, I'll you know, damage, I'm, I'm, yeah, that's pretty yeah. good with it. Cause the, people underestimate my, I'm, I'm not a tall guy. I'm, I'm short. Yeah. Me and Jason about the same height. I'm a short guy. No, we're not. No, hey, hey, no, we're not the same height. Cut that out. I'm taller. Yeah, we got to say height. They just make it look like me. They about to inch. Like me. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. Uh, I'm a pretty powerful guy. And a lot of linebackers didn't estimate my power. So a lot of them guys, they were bigger than me, but they didn't like to work out. That's what probably me and probably me in college was. Our team didn't like them. those guys are great athletes, Division One athletes in my opinion, but they had to work out. And that was their downfall. I liked to work out, so I had an advantage. And they were always underestimating my power. So. Mm-hmm. Some days in the practice, had to let them know what time it was. You know, yeah, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Hey, hey, man, that was some funny stuff, boy. Them juggers be coming out there with that ice pack on. I'd be like, got another one. <laughs> hey, hey, Jason, someone asked, some of them actually wanted to fight me, too. A couple of them, I don't mention no names. They wanted to fight me at the practice, too. Oh, yeah. Hey, yeah, yeah. Hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. like that, man. Hey, man, one thing I've always noticed, man, when you get somebody real good, they be mad. They, they, they ego can't take it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, they ain't that they physical hurt. Take. It's that ego. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. So, so let me ask you a question. So, uh, so it's uh, 20, 2021, you power lifting, like, like you do, like, so when you went to college, you, you were a psychology major. Yes, I was. All right. So, so I know what your, I know what your daily nine to five is. I'm gonna let you go ahead and say it, but it's oh. odd. It's odd that you, that that's, that's the profession you went into because you don't really hear many men going into that field. No, honestly, you don't, because, you know, men, we try to do things that we do with our hands and, make a lot of money, you know, things like that. But for me, yeah. my goal in life was always to help people. So even when I was in school, I knew I was like, well, if I make a decent amount of money, I can take care of myself, but I love to give back. That's how my thing, that's one of the reasons why I joined my fraternity, because we did a lot of service projects where we gave back. Mm-hmm. And so at college, I got with Dr. Wells. He's also a Q from Tennessee State University. God rest yeah. him. God rest his soul. He died yeah. last year. He um, guided me to I finished and graduated, got my degree in psychology. So I took that back to Miami. And I started working at an agency called New Horizons Community Mental Health Center. And I've been there since 1997 until now. Man. Yeah, Same company. Yeah. But I didn't, I didn't like stay the same position, of course. I moved up the ladder. Right, um, right, right, right. But I also, Jason doesn't know this now, but right now I also work for the Department of Juvenile Justice as a program specialist part-time or with juveniles that have been arrested and they're out on probation and trying to get them right, too. So I've been doing that for two years as well. So I'm doing two jobs right now. My, for my day job, I work at New Arise Community Mental Health Center is uh, it's called a care coordinator. What I do is assess families mm-hmm. for for all kinds of needs, whether it's substance abuse, domestic violence, mental health, whatever they whatever service they need, I do that for them, linked into that. Okay. So I yeah, so I'm I'm trying to do I'm trying to work in the community, trying to do my best job, trying to help and give back to people that are less fortunate than myself. 
Dig so it. what made you choose this, like, <laughs> this area to help? I mean, you know what I'm saying? Because you say, like, honestly, help honestly, I'm not really sure. I think I just, it's, I think it's, it's something that God told me to do. He always pointed me in that direction. I'll be to help people as much as you can that are less fortunate. Um, I've seen some good cases. I've seen some very sad cases. And at first, when you first start working in that field, you tend to get a little, get attached to the to your to your patients or your clients because you want them to see, you want them to do well. But at times, you know, you can't save them all. There's some sad stories out there, you know. But I learned to detach. It took me a while to first got too connected to some of my clients. I had to let some of that stuff go. But as you get older, you get more experience. You learn that you have to. You can't save everybody. Just try to save one or two, and you're done a job. Now I learn how to do that now. Dig it, oh. dig it. So how do you, uh, with the job being so with being so mentally taxing, the, how do you detox from? Uh... I detox. Well, I, you already just told you <clears throat> by me getting up, getting up at five o'clock in the morning, going to Caution CrossFit, which is five minutes from my house now. Mm-hmm. I go there, I work out, come back home, get on my laptop, and then when I get off, uh, I usually go back on certain days and, and take a um, kettlebell class, which is um, being done. Yeah, kettlebell class, like a kettlebell hit bike class, which yeah. I do uh, Mondays and th- Mondays and Wednesdays. Yes. Now you you re- so you're really really into this. You're you're really deep into working out. Yeah, really, yeah. Really working out. I, mean, I love it. I mean, it helps me sleep at night. Like you said, it helps me detox from my jobs. My jobs, plural, because in Miami right. you guys have two jobs and still crack to survive. <laughs> <laughs> That's how it is in Miami. If you if you don't get, you're not working two jobs and selling crack or you're pimping somebody, you're going you're gonna suffer. So. Yeah, it's expensive so, down there, Doc. Yeah, it's expensive, man. So I do that. And also, like I said, the yoga, the yoga studio I go to, Body for Yoga and Hialeah, is an, um, they love me there. It's an amazing, it's an amazing yoga studio. Mm-hmm. And uh, I go there, like I said, four times, four to five times a week. I sneak it in. I ain't going to tell you the times. It's, it's all right, man. It's all right. And, and, and the instructors are amazing there. They, they, made, they made me, they, they bring the best out of me. And like I said, me being an African-American, like being the only African American there most of the times, you tend to stand out. So yeah, can't hide in the back, huh? Can't hide. No, I, I, no, I don't, put, I don't hide in the back. My mom said never get in the back. Always in the front. So I'm always in the front of the old class. So I don't hide. So <laughs> no. that's what's up. I dig it, dig it. Yoga class. So you, so you don't. So basically, with the yoga was the yoga class like a challenge for you? Like man, I got to get yeah, better. You hit it right in the head. That's another thing. As as men, especially black men, we need to find things that challenges. Can't get too comfortable. Mm-hmm. In your own skin. If you want to progress in anything in life, you have to be challenged. And like you, like you just said, when I when I was in the yoga studio and saw these poses these people are doing, I'm like, I'm, I'm, my shoulders are too big, my thighs are too big. I'm not being mm-hmm. these kind of poses. It's impossible. Exactly. But now that I put my heart, my mind, and heart into it, I can do some of the poses now. I post them on Instagram sometimes to prove yeah. that you can do these things because we as black men, we got to stop doing the same things as we as we used to do. We got to expand our horizons. We have to do these things. You can't be limited to just the same old thing. Get to get home, come home from work, get a beer, get on my couch, watch TV. You're not going to live long like that. You have yeah. to keep yourself active if you want to live a long time. So I'm big on being active. So, so in, in Miami, uh, working out, born and raised in Miami, working out, like what do you do? What do you do besides, because I, cause I know the answer to this next question, because what do you do besides working out, go to school, work out? Oh. And then... Well, like I said, I live in Miami Lakes, which is a very good area. And so everything mm-hmm. for me is in walking distance. Move theater, restaurants. I mean, the only thing I know, I'm not really a club person anymore. I'm a little older now, I'm too old for clubs, but restaurants, lounges, everything is in my five, five mile radius. Mm-hmm. So I have to go, if I can walk to these places, I want to Uber or whatever, I could drive my car, but I don't have to. Everything's mm-hmm. in a five mile radius where I live at. But I'm a big movie guy. I like going to different restaurants. Yeah, you, I do it all the time by myself. Sometimes, most of the time, mm-hmm. I try and different. I, don't, I don't try different things. Me, and my my best friend, we do those type of things. We we will call me. He say, "I'm going here. Try me try this." Post it on Instagram, and I go somewhere find some. Post it on Instagram. That's what we do. We just we just do that to find different restaurants, try different things, because that's what life's about. It's not about doing the same thing over and over again. It's about trying different things and doing different experiences. In Miami, it's so. It's, there's so many different restaurants, too many nationalities, too many cultures. Right. You've got to experience those things. Yeah. 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 So I mean, so so you hit on this a second ago. You said I go places by myself. So so you're saying you've never been married, no children. No yeah. man. Unfortunately, never married and no children. That's, that's what I'm saying. And you're 48. 
Nope, 47. Not 48 yet. It's coming though. It's coming though. It's coming. But October. I still, but I still, but I still look 30 though. So you know. I, yeah, I, you do. You do. You look like you, you look like an 18 year old freshman out of, coming out of Miami Lakes. I got you. At, at, at 16 years old, going to college at 16. Yeah, uh, yeah. Grown. Yeah. So you graduated high school early. No, I just, I just, my mom put me in school early because my my birthday was such a, so late. My mom put me in school like a year early. So almost a year and a uh-huh. half early. They didn't want to put me. They wanted to hold me in kindergarten. My mom's like, nah. So they get my mom told me, asked her one time, how come everybody's older than me in every grade? And mm-hmm. she's like, when you was when you was f- almost five, I want to put you in first grade. They said he was too young. So they said, well, give him a test. I bet he passed it. So they gave me a test and I passed. They start me in pre, taught me in kindergarten like a year early, year and a half early. Wow. That's why. Yeah, that's so why I- wow. Smart, educated, smart from educated from K one all the way up. Yeah, pretty much. Hey, man, look, because it's funny. Man, our birthday's in the same month, and uh, I got a partner from high school, man. This joker was born one – he got the same birthday. He was born a year earlier. This joker graduated in 88. I came out in 90. I was like, hey, man, something's wrong. My mom was <laughs> like, hey, man, you just, we just moved around a lot. I'm like, come That's on. That's it? Man. Yeah. Yeah. Them, yeah. them October birthdays, man, it's, it's hard when it's in school. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Either you started early you got, or you started late. And you late, you, you, yeah, you, you're one of the oldest in the group. Mm-hmm. That's right. Yeah, nobody like that. Man, <laughs> man, nobody likes being the oldest one in the group, man. Because nah. you look, because it always looks like either you, either you, either you got held back a year, or you didn't, yeah. you, you weren't <laughs> smart. Yeah, even, man, even I, up, as you know, Jason, you know, online, you know, Andre, Andre uh, Williams, our, our quarterback, who's also on my line at uh, 12, he's, he's, mm-hmm. uh, we both born at the same time. So we're the youngest in our line. He's 47. Mm-hmm. And I'm 47, so we have the joke in the line. We, every time something goes on, that the two youngest brothers got to do something with always me and him. So yeah. we're the youngest in our line. Everybody in our line, like 50, 52, 56. Yeah, yeah Hager, the oldest, you know? man. But yeah. they're, 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 how old are you? I'm 47. And Joe Randall always jokes, was like, man, y'all still ain't turning 50 yet. I'm like, nah, we ain't turning 50 yet. We got a long way to go. <laughs> you got a long way to go, brother. Look, yeah, I, ain't even, got- I ain't even turning 50 yet. I, get, I turn 50 this year. See? Yeah, man. yeah, yeah. I think uh, other than I think me and Willie, the last ones to turn fifty. Well, fifty. He'll turn fifty. Yeah. He got. I think Willie got two more years. Not to uh, see. Yeah, I, I ain't no rush either. So no, no, no. Ain't no, ain't no rush. No. So that's it all. So, hey man. So what's what's the what's the plan for you next, man? Like you, uh, uh, new new position with the juvenile justice. Uh, uh, well, right now we our, pre- our, our CEO just got changed. Well, see, our CEO company just retired. Cause I went mm-hmm. for New Horizon, which is the only, all only black owned CMAC Community Mental Health Center in the state of Florida. Okay, that's another reason why it's right. Actually, Jason, right by where your dad's to coach at Jackson High School. Yeah, like Jackson. two blocks. Yeah, okay. like two blocks from there. So right now, everything's on. You know, everything all over the place because of COVID. So we just started going back to the office in two weeks. Um, so. I don't know what's gonna happen then. Maybe a year after that, I'll probably try to go into maybe a management position. Probably, I'm probably gonna go into that. But um, right now, I'm just stay where I'm at right now. What about the power? What about powerlifting? You gonna try to? You got another oh, competition yeah. coming up? Well, probably um, in the fall there'll be some coming up, and I'll, I'll sign up for those probably after August. Because last year I didn't do anything because of COVID. I like I know I didn't really expect, but they had nationals last weekend in Daytona. Actually, oh. that's that's huge. That's that's I, I don't know if I ever make it that far, but. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm gonna try it. I'm gonna try this time. So I think it's something coming up in December, not too far from my house, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna see what happens. What uh, what, get, what, like, what are you gonna do to make uh, nationals? I gotta I gotta live more than I gotta live. I gotta live at least in probably like 600 plus. Mm-hmm. Probably all, yeah, 600 plus on 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 what lift? Like, for uh, me, I can lift like 600 plus in the squat and the deadlift. Probably make it. To that. That'll get you in. You ain't got a bench? Yeah, you don't, y'all don't have to bench. Yeah, I got a bench too, but my bench isn't that good. I ain't gonna tell you what it is. It's not that good. <laughs> I'm working on it. All right. All right. I, it's, I used to bench more in high school that I can't not understand, but you get older, something gonna fall off. So yeah, I'm understand. still working on it. I'm uh-huh. working on it. So hopefully, if I, can get, if I can get that up a little more and get like get to 600 plus pounds and deadlift and squat, then I have a chance to go to states. Go to states, to go to that win states, then you go to national. So let's see what happens. But I'm going to say I'm going against guys my own age now. I'm not going against guys. That are young, it's my my age, like from forty five to mm-hmm. fifty. So we'll gotcha. see what happens. Gotcha. So do you, do you come out? Uh, do you or you only do the powerlifting in the state of Florida? Uh, yeah, for now. 
Okay. All right. I was going to see if he's going to come out to North Carolina or Washington because Michael's out in well, Washington. I can, yeah. I can look at it. I got to pay for all that stuff in my own pocket. But I don't know if, hey. if, if I see something and they can handle it, I wouldn't mind doing that now. Okay. Once I get my numbers up, I'm, I'm going anywhere. It doesn't matter. Okay. All right, man. Let me keep me posted, man. I want to try to check when he's. I'm not going. To, I'm not competing. I'm just going to come watch. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I come check it out. I. I don't know about lifting that. It's hard yeah. because the first time I messed up a couple of times. The first one, I, the first official one with three mm-hmm. judges, I messed up a couple of times because you got to wait for commands. I didn't wait for the commands like I'm supposed to, so I got no rep a couple of times. <clears throat> you only get three chances. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, you get three chances per lift. So. Like, for example, if you put, I like say, I used to start out with some light. I start out with like 450, 500, and 535, right? So if I miss, <laughs> if I miss the, the second lift, I can't go down and wait. I have to do the same way over again. You can't oh, okay. miss. So you only get three chances. So the first meet I did, a lot of guys missed because they overshot their load. They, they start off too heavy. Mm. That, could, that could ruin your whole day, right? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, man. I don't, I don't let ego get to me. I, I'm just very patient. Start with something light and like hit in practice, and I go from there. Damn, all right, all right. Smart. You got three judges. Know, though. The game plan. Yeah, yeah, you got, you got, you got, yeah. Yeah, yeah, you got, you got, you got one, one in the back, one in the side. And if you if you make your lift, there are three lights that go off. You have, to, you have to have at least two to, to pass the lift. But if you, if you get one, it's a mm. no rep. If you get two, it passes. But if you hit three, you're good. But you got to okay. get. At least two. You don't so get two. Once you lift, the three lights have to go off, or two lights. Oh. So it ain't just like you get the weight, pick it up. Now you gotta wait for the command. Like on the squat, you have to get the weight, back up, hold it, and then they tell you to go down. Mm-hmm. That's when you go down. You can't just go off the rack like you want. You gotta hold oh, it. I, can't, I can't just rack that that down. Yeah. Next yeah, <laughs> when oh, you God. finish, you can check my Instagram. Like I got a video on there. You gotta back up, hold it. And then you got to oh, yeah, wait. You got to got show control, and then you go down and come up. Mm-hmm. Make sure you ain't got the shaky knees with it. Then you're right. Then you, you got to <laughs> rack it back. You can't just drop it. You know what I mean? Oh, you, you got to rack it. I can't squat down. No, and... You got to ease yeah. it back. Yeah. Oh, yeah, no. yeah so yeah. So they want, they want to see you control the weight. Yeah. Yeah. Ah, yeah. uh, okay. okay. It can't be all. Even on the bench press, too, I, I'm not used to it. I'm still working on it. That's all the issue is that when you take the off the rack, you have to hold it. And then when I they tell you to go up. down, you gotta put it, go down, you gotta hold it there. You gotta hold it down too? Oh man. No, no. Yeah, that's, the that's, that's a killer right there. That's a killer. So you gotta show <laughs> the goal. You know what I mean? So that's my problem. It's like most I can, I can hold the weight but, and push it, but I gotta hold it for that long period of time, like a mm-hmm. like two, two seconds, and then push it up. That's kind of hard because you can't, your feet move. Your no, it doesn't count. Your feet you can't, can't move or not. Oh man. Oh gosh, no, nah, it's, yeah. it's very technical. So that's why my yeah. bench is low. It's, it's very technical. But I'm working on it though. Hopefully, okay. I get it better. Than that. So, we'll see what happens. Dig it, dig it, yeah, dig man. it. But look, man, I, I appreciate you coming on, man. I, I like, I know it's last minute. So I, I do, no, I cool. it's all good. I do appreciate Look, and I'm glad you did, man, because I've always wanted to ask you questions about like the lifting and stuff like that. But every time I see you, it's at homecoming or we're out and about in a social setting, man. Oh, we, that's no problem. Yeah, so it's always I just, like, I to come on. I'm, I'm 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 glad you came on. Every time every time uh Jay reaches to that bag, he always pull out some gold. So you know what I'm saying, hey, I appreciate you coming on. It was it's definitely been a great episode, man. No definitely. problem. Yeah. So look, man, I'm a uh, I'm a jump. Michael, uh, he always does. Going through this, I did the last two weeks. So man, look, every time we come on, we have a guest, man. We always have them leave the viewers with a a word of inspiration and something to something to hang their hat on for the week, man. So. Give the viewer something that you know, a word of inspiration or something to hang the hat on for this week. Well, for all your viewers, uh, my, my main thing is get out your comfort zone, try something different, don't do the same thing over and over again, expect a different result. The main thing, especially all the African American people out there, try to do something different out your comfort zone. That's my that's my biggest thing. Try yoga, try Pilates, uh, try something CrossFit if you want to try it, or maybe it's just a, just a, fit, a hit class or something like that, a boot camp. Just do something different. Don't do the same thing and you get some better results because more work and working out helps you live a longer life. You may not beat father time, but you could you could definitely slow him down a little bit. Dig it. Dig hey, it. I can dig, dig that. It. Definitely. Hey, man. Dig that. Dope, dope, man. <clears throat> hey, look, man. I, I uh I'm gonna see you in October. As a matter of fact, I'm gonna see you next. I'll see you later this week. Uh, right. I, Thursday. I talk, yeah, Thursday. I talked to Dre. 
He said, you're going to come pick me up or I'll just drive over there. No big deal. Uh, okay. And I'm going to see you at homecoming. Too. I'll be there on Saturday, too. All right. No problem. I'll be there probably Thursday or Friday. Then. Oh, OK. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah All right. Yeah, yeah. Where y'all going to stay at? You don't know yet? I don't know yet. I'm sorry. Yeah, we, I, I, I put that again. I, I ain't worried about that right now. Most of, my, most of my lines should be there again, but you know how that yeah. goes. So, But uh, we, I look forward to coming again. I should be there like Thursday or Friday. I'm not sure yet. Dig it. Dig it. OK. All right. That's what's up. All right. Hey, man, Mike, I, like I told you, man, it's my guy, man. He's, I appreciate him coming on. He hey. Always, hey, man, he uh, he dropped some nuggets on us today, man. I, hey, I hope it was, good, it was good for me. Yeah, absolutely. It was dope hearing about the CrossFit, man, uh, mental health stuff you're doing, working with the juveniles. Uh, you got your hands in a lot, man. It's good to see you doing your thing, working out, getting out of that comfort zone with the yoga. I'm, I'm not powerlifting, but I'm on the yoga and working out. So, man, I'm definitely. Uh, that's fine. Sure. That's all right. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. All right, man. I'm gonna let you take us out of here, Michael. All right, man. Well, thank you for joining us for another amazing episode of I Am the Change podcast. We are Dreams Reality Incorporated, a nonprofit organization geared toward uplifting, inspiring, and empowering communities all over the world. I'm your host, Michael Davis, beside Mr. Jason Redman. Uh, thank you, Cedric Taylor, our amazing guest, um, all right. for hopping on with us. And um, you know what I'm saying? Dropping some knowledge, dropping some nuggets. If this is your first time joining us, please like, subscribe, and continue to follow us on this journey. If you were rocking with us, keep on keeping on because we got more good stuff to come. Um, just thank you. And remember, our goal is not to be better than anybody, but together we can achieve better for everybody. Thank you and have a good night. Peace. Peace. All right. All right. All right.